What's up guys, this is Claire from The Study Gurus. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a real essay I wrote in high school that got a really good grade. I want to show you why it got a good grade so that you can put these techniques to use for yourself. The essay question that we got asked in this exam, which was for English, was describe the main idea or purpose in two short texts you have studied. Explain why the idea or purpose helped you remember the texts. So there are two parts to this essay question. The first part is this part. Describe the main idea or purpose in two short texts you've studied. The second part is this. Explain why the idea or purpose helped you remember the texts. So the, the, you've got to do two things in your essay. Describe the main idea or purpose, whichever one you choose, and also explain why that idea helped you to make, helped you to remember the texts why were the poems memorable? In this essay, I wrote about two short poems that we studied in class. They're two really famous poems by a famous British uh, poet called Wilfred Owen. You do not need to know anything about poetry. You do not need to have read these poems. You don't need to be studying poetry at school. As long as you're writing, an e as long as you have essays to write, what I'm about to talk about is going to be relevant to you because I'm mostly going to focus on essay structure and the essay techniques that I use, which could apply to any essay at all. So please don't worry if you haven't studied poetry. I'm not a poetry expert. I haven't actually studied poetry probably since I wrote this essay. I'm afraid the subject matter of these poems is a little bit grisly because Wilfred Owen is a famous war poet and he fought in World War One, and yeah, graphically describes the realities of war and how inhumane it is. But the good news is the essay is not very long and it's a really good example of how you can write a really good essay really simply. Okay, let's get stuck in. This first paragraph here is my introduction. It's short and sweet, but it hits the main points of an introduction really well. In saying that, I clearly got off to a false start. Huh. So I've included all of the mistakes I made in this essay. I haven't left, I haven't polished it at all. I've transposed the exact words that I wrote in my actual exam paper. So you're getting this warts and all because I want you to see that an essay doesn't need to be perfect in order to get a good mark. So I started off by saying an important and then crossed it out. Instead I said, a main idea in the poems Dulce e Decorum Est, an anthem for doomed youth by Wilfred Owen is war. Now, I'm really glad that I crossed that first, those first two words out because the question asked us to describe the main idea in two short texts, not an important idea. So by crossing it out, I made sure that I was answering the first part of the essay question specifically. The other thing that I do in this first sentence is I spell out what the main idea of the two poems is, and that main idea is war. So let's just go back up and look at the essay question. Look, it said, describe the main idea, I didn't do purpose, in two short texts you have studied. So in, the, in my introduction, the very first thing that I do is tell the reader what that main idea in the two poems is, and in this case, it's war. Okay, the next sentence of the introduction tells the reader at a very high level what the essay is going to be about. So it basically canvases what my paragraphs are going to explain. I say, it is important because it illustrates the poet's opinion that war is not glorious or honorable, but brutal, disturbing, and pointless. And then in the last sentence of the introduction, what I do is I importantly address the second part of the essay question. I say, this is important because these significant ideas help me remember the texts. So let's go back up. Remember the essay question asked us to also explain why the idea helped you remember the texts. So throughout this essay, you'll see that I keep coming back to why, um, how, why the poem was memorable, basically. Okay, so that's the introduction. Only three very short sentences, but it does the job. Now let's move on to the paragraphs. So the first sentence of every paragraph you write should be the S of sexy, and the S stands for statement. Sometimes it's called a topic sentence. It tells the reader what that paragraph is going to be about. The statement uh, for this paragraph was, the idea of war is illustrated in the poem Dolce e Decorum Est. So this is just highlighting to the reader that this paragraph is going to be an explanation of that idea of war throughout this poem. 
the remainder of the paragraph is the rest of sexy. It's the explanation, it's using examples, and it's explaining the importance of the point that you're making. So how does it link back to the main idea or purpose of the essay? And you'll see that I basically do this throughout the essay, not just in one isolated part. Let's just take a look at the next sentence to give you an idea of how I do this. I say, Traditionally, war is thought to be glorious and noble because it is an honour to fight for one's country. Wilfred Owen abolishes this myth by using graphic language techniques which convey the sick truths of war. The phrase, guttering, choking, drowning, obscene as cancer, bitter, bitter as the end, is showing the brutal, devastating reality of war and that war is not glorious in any sense. It is only cold and desensitising. Okay, so basically what I'm doing there is I'm, I'm explaining this first opening statement. I'm explaining how the idea of war is illustrated in the poem. And importantly, I'm being specific about that. I'm saying um, he abolishes the myth that war is noble and that he does that by using graphic language techniques. The other thing I, I go on to do that's really important is that I use actual quotes from the actual from the poem itself. So this is the X part of sexy example. I'm pulling out real examples from the poem and using them in my essay. And you have to do this in any essay you write because you can't make arguments or assertions or statements without backing them up. So if I'm saying that Wilfred Owen abolishes the myth by using graphic language techniques, well, what language techniques? How, you know, how does he do that? So it's really important that I use examples from the poems to show how he abolishes the myth that war is noble. Okay, so let's move on now. Let's just have a look at the next paragraph. Look, we've only got three to go. I told you it wasn't very long, so stick with me. The next statement. The text is remembered because of the way Wilfred Owen describes the bitter reality of war. So this second, this paragraph, which is kind of the second main paragraph after the intro, is addressing the second part of the essay question, why the idea of war helped me remember the text. I've just said also in this comment that a better word than remembered here would have um, been memorable. Doesn't It's just not very good kind of English, but I, um, as I said, this is a warts and all essay, so it wasn't perfect. And I've, I, you know, if I was writing this again, I'd say the text is memorable, not remembered, because that doesn't really make sense. But anyway, let's move on. In the second sentence of this paragraph, I again make reference to a specific language technique, in this case, a simile. The simile that I use is bent double like old beggars. Actually stating what the precise language techniques were gave, I think, this essay credibility and it demonstrated that I had a strong level of knowledge and understanding. Because it was an English essay about poetry, it was appropriate that I mentioned what the specific language techniques were. Okay, and here is another typo, I believe. Um, the idea, the war, is, is completely exhausting. That should probably be that instead of the. But once again, no essay that you write an exam is ever going to be perfect. But I just wanted to point out what this, the small errors are. Okay, let's go down to the end of this paragraph now. So I've gone, I've talked about actual examples from the poem, and then finally I say, these ideas imprint lasting images in my thoughts because they're so vivid and disturbing. So this again is addressing the second part of the essay question. I'm tying back the examples that I've used and explained and I'm saying the graphic language used makes the idea of war memorable because these ideas, these graphic gruesome images created by these language techniques imprint lasting images in my mind because they're so disturbing. Not a very happy subject matter. Just quickly, here, I've said there instead of they are. That's called a contraction, and I don't, I wouldn't use those in essays. They are more, it's an, it's an informal use of language, and when you're writing essays, you should try to be quite formal. So now when I'm writing, I never use, when I'm writing, you know, essays or an art, or even a, not always in blog articles, but and if I was writing an essay like this, I would not say there, I would say they are. So try to avoid things like it's or whose or there, um, because it's better to write out the full words, it just sounds more formal. Okay, let's move on to the second to last paragraph. You guessed it, I start off with the statement, the S of sexy. 
In this one I say, in the poem Anthem for Doomed Youth, the idea that soldiers are falsely motivated to go to war by honour and grace which they will not receive. Okay, so clearly I should have, that sentence doesn't actually read very well, and I should have said in the poem Anthem for Doomed Youth, the idea is that soldiers are falsely motivated, etc. But anyway, the things you can get away with in an exam essay. Okay, so I've moved on to talking about the second text. So I've dedicated, what, two paragraphs to the first text and two to the second text. Um, and you'll see that I'm following the same sexy structure for these paragraphs as well. Now, again, there's a little stray comma there after war. Don't know why I chucked that in, but it really doesn't matter. And again, now the rest of the essay paragraph is the remainder of sexy, E, X, and I. And straight away, I'm talking about specific examples from the poem. So I say, this idea is shown throughout the poem by an extended metaphor of a peacetime funeral. So it's really good that I used the specific language term extended metaphor, um, because again, it just kind of brings a certain level of credibility to the essay. And then the remainder of the paragraph is explaining how that extended metaphor is used. And you can see again, I'm using real quotes from the poem. Okay, this is just another little type grammar typo I wanted to point out. Um, see how I put an apostrophe after so soldiers? Well, that apostrophe should actually be between the R and the S. But that's okay, but I just want to point out once again, it's not a perfect essay. Um, but, you know, we can always do better. And I think now I have a much better understanding of when apostrophes should be used. Yeah, I just think this language here was a little bit sloppy. But that's okay. Um, and then I've got another typo. The and then the right after each other. This is the thing your brain does in an exam. And again, I've got a sentence that doesn't read so well. Wow, this paragraph had a few errors, didn't it? This probably should have said, the soldiers are remembered by those who love them, but not everyone else. And then I think there should have been a dash there, but not everyone else, dash. The soldiers are a faceless crowd. Okay, but um, the good part about this paragraph was I think just it still sticks to the sexy structure. It gets straight into using tangible examples from the poem. It doesn't, there's not much fluff in it. It gets straight to the point and it answers the, once again, it, it's, it's really getting to the first part of the essay question by explaining the idea of war. Okay, let's move on to the last paragraph of this essay, which comments that one. Do, do, do. Okay, yep, you guessed it. Statement, first sentence. In this paragraph, it was the idea that in war, soldiers die in more sufferable ways than people imagine is revealed in the anthem, in anthem for doomed youth. So, again, getting at the first part of the essay question, explaining the idea of war. Again, I'm really following a similar structure. I launch into using some quotes and I'm explaining the idea that war is brutal in these poems. I'm explaining another language technique, that of a metaphor. I was just saying here, in this sentence, I say, this helps make the poem memorable. That word helps is really unnecessary. I could have just said, this makes the poem memorable. And here, but in this sentence, the good thing is that I'm drawing, I'm drawing a connection to the second part of the essay question. I'm explaining why this metaphor about cattle makes the poem memorable. Okay, so... That is the end of the essay. You can see it's actually not very long, um, but it probably took me, I'd say, I think it had an allocation of about 45 to 50 minutes to write in the exam. But it shows that an essay does not need to be long to be good. But before I kind of sum up what I like about this essay, I just want to point out that I did not, for some reason, write a conclusion. Perhaps I ran out of time, I think that's the likely explanation, or my brain just shut down and forgot, which also happens in exams. But if you're running out of time in an exam, you're furiously writing your essays, you really should at least write, if you're, if you're really desperate, just write one short sentence as a conclusion, because it would be such a shame to do all of that hard work in writing an essay and then lose marks for not following uh, you know, proper essay structure, which of course is introduction, paragraphs, and then conclusion. Um, I was lucky probably to get away with still getting a really good mark for this essay despite not having a conclusion. So I just wanted to show you what I probably should, the type of thing I should have written as a conclusion here. I say, both of these poems by Wilfred Owen are based on the idea of war and strongly illustrate Wilfred Owen's belief that the realities of war are inhumane and far from the noble experience traditionally portrayed. The language techniques Owen utilizes create graphic images in the reader's mind which makes these poems highly memorable. 
Okay, so I think this fake <laughs> conclusion is a nice summary of the essay. It addresses the first part of the essay question and it talks about how both poems focus on the idea of war. It explains um, the bulk of the essay which was explaining how the poems illustrate the idea that war is inhumane. And it also references the second part of the essay question about why these poems are memorable, why the idea of war is memorable, and that's because of the graphic language techniques that Wilfred Owen uses. So that's only two sentences, but it's I think it's absolutely sufficient for the purposes of a high school essay conclusion. So to sum up this essay, I think what was really good about it and the way that I think you can get a really good mark for your essays as well is to realize that you don't need to write a perfect essay to get a good grade. You need to probably just be um, have a good understanding of what it is that you're writing about, whether it be poems or a book or a movie or an idea or a history, whatever it is. You need to have a good understanding of that and then you need to approach the essay with kind of a scientific formula. And by that I mean your essay needs to have solid structure. So I really like that this essay has an introduction and it has paragraphs that follow sexy. Every paragraph had a statement, every paragraph had a full explanation of what that paragraph was about, i.e. the idea dear of war in the poem. The other thing I really liked is that I used a lot of actual quotes from both poems because that gave my essay substance. I wasn't just waffling on about things that I've made up, I was making an assertion about the ideas in the, in the poems and I was backing that up with actual quotes from the poems. So you always have to use evidence for the arguments that you're making. And the other thing that I really liked about this essay is that I answered both parts of the essay question. I discussed how the poems show the idea of war and I explained why the idea is memorable. I kept explaining throughout the essay that the use of graphic language techniques makes the idea, Wilfred Owen's idea of war, really memorable. These concepts about structure and sexy should be applied to absolutely any, any essay that you're writing at high school. It doesn't matter what the subject is. So now you can go away and take a look at this uh, example essay in your own time. Everything that I have talked about in this video is included in these comments down the side here. If you have any samples of writing, you're in the middle of an essay, you have just written one that you'd like some personal feedback on, please feel free to email me. I love helping students out 101 and I'm always happy um, to give feedback, personalized feedback where I can. You can simply email your writing to me at claire at thestudygurus.com. Now my name Claire is spelt C-L-A-R-E. Good luck with your essay writing. I know that you can write an amazing essay as well. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And we can't wait for you to join us in the next video.